There are two things every client wants. They're hungry for a delicious solution to their problems, and they want a recipe or a strategy for making it happen. Three of the big problems faced by business experts, thought leaders, and professional service firms are, how do you show up to your potential clients as a solution to their problems? How do you scale your ideas and your business? And how do you overcome the fear associated with creating and selling your ideas? The good news is that when you write a thought leader manifesto, you can solve all three problems at the same time. In our previous video, we talked about how to create thought leadership solutions for your clients' problems. Today, we're translating your big picture thought leader idea into a package that your clients will want to buy. It's three reasons to write your thought leader manifesto. Once you have your strategy, your first move is to identify the resources and ingredients you need to make it work. You may have them already on hand, or you may have to shop around to access them. The number one marketing problem you face is showing up as a suitable solution for your client's problems. If potential clients can't see you as a solution for them, then they're not buying from you. They'll go and work with someone else. Showing up is one thing, but you have to do it the right way. If you showed up just by standing on a street corner trying to look cool, then that's probably not going to attract your ideal clients. Unless, of course, you look like this guy. You might attract clients, but they might not be the right type of clients you want. That's what happens when you show up in a vague way. There's an old saying in the world of sales. If you confuse, you lose. It's like visiting someone's website. If you can't grab their attention and show them that you've got the solution to their problem in the first 10 seconds, they're gone. And what's worse, they're probably not coming back. There are three things you must address here. We've talked about two of them in previous videos. You need to speak in your client's language. You need to attract their attention by speaking to their problem. And you need to show them your approach for solving their problem. This is one of the big three reasons why you need to write a thought leader manifesto to show your philosophy or approach to solving your client's problems in a clear, consistent, and decisive way. What's a manifesto? A manifesto is a declaration of your intent. It's a tool for decisive change. And in my view, it's an essential part of every thought leader's toolkit. Yes, some people like the Unabomber have used manifestos and hurt a lot of people. But a lot of people like authors, artists, and politicians have used them for good as well. A thought leader manifesto is a short, sharp statement of how you're going to solve your client's problems. It's a plan for how your clients will win. It's a strategy, a recipe, a game plan, an instruction guide, and a winning formula. Here's an example. How do you live a good life? We all ask that question at some point in our lives. But how do you answer that? There are so many alternatives, and most people only have vague answers. It's like they have a shopping list of general themes that doesn't promote consistent action. What they're missing is the right combination of a powerful context and the rules or actions to win in that context. The previous video was all about defining your context. And this video is all about defining those decisive actions that you would recommend your clients take. It looks like this. While there are a few different versions of the Ten Commandments, depending on which Bible you're reading, the backstory typically goes like this. Moses and a bunch of children were camping out at Mount Sinai. There was a bit of a storm with some lightning and thunder, and then God came down for a chat. After a couple of beers or perhaps some bread and wine, God gave Moses a gift, some stone tablets. And on those tablets were the Ten Commandments that basically were the rules for how to live a good Christian lifestyle. Those commandments included Sunday is a holy day, don't go around killing people, no stealing, and none of that adultery either. Can you see how clear, consistent, and decisive this is? 
If you were choosing to follow the Christian faith, you could look at the Ten Commandments, this manifesto from the Bible, to decide whether it's a good fit for you. You might look at the Ten Principles and go, hey, they look pretty good to me. Or you might look at them and go, not my cup of tea. When you have a decisive statement about how you will solve your client's problems, you make it really easy for them to choose to either work with you or not. You want your potential clients to say, I like your approach. In other words, I like your strategy, I like your philosophy, I like your manifesto. An important point. You don't have to use the word commandments in your manifesto. That might send the wrong message. And there are plenty of other words to choose that work. Rules, values, beliefs, actions, principles, laws, steps, truths, axioms, formula. Once you have all of your resources and ingredients, you have to prepare them in a way that makes them easy to consume later. How do you create a global business based on your ideas? The big challenge for a lot of content creators, business experts and thought leaders is that they get attracted by shiny objects. They're consistently jumping from one thing to another. Work from home is a hot topic, I think I'll jump onto that. Virtual teams is a hot topic, I think I'll jump on that. All this leads to is you bouncing around, reacting to situations and producing ad hoc solutions. This is a huge waste of your energy, attention and resources. But wait, it gets worse. This makes it impossible for you to attract your ideal clients because they don't know who you are and they don't know what you stand for. As an ideas guy, I've struggled with this throughout my career. It got so bad for me whenever I was meeting friends. Their first question was nearly always, what are you working on now? With the emphasis on the now. And usually this came with a big eye roll. <laughs> if my friends can't keep up with me, what hope have potential clients got? The solution for this is to have a structure or a framework for you to place your work into. This underlying framework provides certainty, clarity and consistency. It sends a strong, clear signal even when the content shifts. When you have a foundation structure, then you can create different creative expressions of your ideas. And this is the key to scaling your business. A great example of this is the work of this guy. He wrote a seven part manifesto. He created a visual model of his manifesto and he turned that into a book that sold over 15 million copies worldwide. Wow. Then he partnered with another company and turned the ideas from his manifesto into his book into a multi-million dollar training company. You might have heard of Stephen Covey and his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This is why I recommend you start with IP creation before you start pumping out content marketing material. The frameworks from your IP will make it easier to create content because you've got a structure or a framework to work from. It will also make it easier for your clients to follow but because there'll be a consistent thread to your work. Best of all, it will give you the foundation, the structure and the platform to scale your idea and grow your business. This is how you become a thought leader. And this is how you turn a single idea into a global empire. Once you've prepared all of your resources and ingredients, you need to bring them all together and transform them into the finished form that you and your clients want to consume. The third big reason you need a thought leader manifesto is fear. At various times, we all get scared, anxious and nervous. It's part of being a human being. Way back in caveman times, if you were on your own, you were at greater risk of dying. But if you were working together, you had a greater chance of surviving. This is now hardwired into our thinking. Being part of a group is good. Being on your own is bad. This is why so many of us shy away from sharing our big ideas. Earning money from your ideas is risky business. One crazy idea and you might get voted off the island. I know what this feels like every time I hit publish on one of these videos. What will people think? But there is a way around this using a manifesto. One of the boldest examples of this happened in the late 1700s when a bunch of guys got together to create the great American startup. 
their previous boss, George, was taking a lot of taxes out of their income and they didn't like it. They got together and said, hey, we're not going to put up with this anymore. We're going to start our own thing. They said, George, you're no longer our boss. We're going to do it our way. If you've ever quit your job to start a brand new business, then you can probably relate to this. Except in this case, their boss was this guy, King George III of England. And by creating their own startup, they were committing treason. And this meant they could be killed or imprisoned. And just to make it worse, they started the war along the way as well. This was the birth of America. And those 56 guys signed a manifesto called the US Declaration of Independence. Their startup idea was to end British rule and start their own country. You can't get much bigger than that. To earn money from what you know is not for everyone. It's a bold move and it's risky. But at least in today's world, you're not likely to be charged with treason when you do it. To help you go from shy to bold, to stand up in public and owning your ideas, there's a key line out of the US Declaration of Independence that can help. One of the big challenges we all face when we're creating and sharing ideas is the risk or the thought of how people will respond. We usually think of we want to get it right and not get it wrong. And this risk makes us shy away from being bold. We tend to shrink a little and play it a little bit safe. But the reality is, in thought leaders and in the world of ideas and manifestos, there are no right and wrong ideas. There's just ideas that are better suited for producing results than others. One of the great lines in the Declaration of Independence was this. We hold these truths to be self-evident. So what does that mean? Essentially, it means we believe this to be true. They're not saying this is the truth. They're saying we believe this to be true. We believe. That's a big difference. Your manifesto is simply what you believe to be true. And a good context for this is to say, this is what I would advise my clients to do in this given situation. It might not apply over there. It might not apply over there. But in this situation, I think that's how you win. The good news is you don't have to please everybody. You simply need to provide value and service to your clients. If you can provide a better context for them to work on, they're going to get better and different results. Plus, the big bonus with a manifesto is that you can sit down and plan it in advance in the cool light of day. Then you can share it with some trusted colleagues. And when you think you're starting to get it along the lines of what you want, you can share it to a bigger and wider audience. The ultimate test for putting all of your ideas together is the end result, the taste test. We want to know, did it work? And most importantly, would we do it again? To write your thought leader manifesto, you need these two steps. First, you need to define your context. Watch the previous video to identify your context shift. Then write a list of actions or rules or laws or commandments about how you win inside that context. The simple way to think about this is if a client was sitting in front of you with that problem, what would you suggest they do? Then you can share it with some colleagues and clients to refine it. Then you can share it in all the work you do. It can be decisive, scalable, and it can also be bold. And once you've done this, click on the next video where we're going to talk about how to convert your thought leadership IP into content creation so you can attract new clients and keep your existing ones.